are in the midst of chapter 19. <coughs> we are learning probably one of the most interesting and difficult sections in Mesilat Yisharim, which is piety. How do we become pious? Chasidut. And we are learning, we learned that there's an, one aspect is the maise itself, the act itself. Divided into two categories, ben adam between human beings, between Hashem. And we spent most of yesterday talking about how we do this, the right motivation to do it the right way, not causing suffering, making sure that you don't harm anybody, even animals, be nice to them, don't kick the kitties out in the lawn, be nice to them. You like cats? You hate cats? Good, don't harm animals. Don't harm animals. Now we are entering often ha'asiyah. That is when we perform something, what are the internal processes that we need to have in mind as we perform them? And he says the following. There are really two major concepts. Fear of Hashem and love of Hashem. Why do you ask it in that order? I would think it's the other order. It's the other way. What would you like it to be? Uh, first no, you mean, fear, then you love? I mean, I would, I mean, in terms of God, I would think it would be that way first. I love it. It's a very deep question that you've asked. And it's a very, very complicated subject in terms of what comes first. The Rambam tells us that yira comes first. It's a certain type of yira. Then comes love. And then there is another type of yira that it bears from that. It's sort of a, a you know, one two that keeps growing, you know, one two, one two that is affecting. So your year brings the love, the love brings year, year it brings love, and it sort of keeps growing and growing and growing. Fear and love are the two, only two motions in the universe expansion and contraction. Fear causes contraction. Yira causes you to stop what you're doing and think, should you be doing it? And love, Josh, what does love do? It calls you to expand, to give. Right? The Lashon of Chazal is we say that we, the expansion is called Chesed and the contraction is called Din. That is the way that we that everything in this universe is, relates to one another. Chesed and Din. Yira is the contraction. Ahava is the expansion. Now, how do we establish the fear? So the first, which is what we left off with yesterday, he says, Hachna'a milefana vidbarach. Hachna'a. Surrendering our will to Hashem. Boshet bekarov el avodato. To have shame. When you violate. And honor. Kavod hanasa el mitzvotav. And show honor to his commandments. So you perform a mitzvah, you do it honorably. Don't do it with contempt. Right, I give you the example. This is for Josh. So your wife tells you, you know, <coughs> I love flowers for Shabbat. I love flowers, getting flowers for Shabbat. So you go buy flowers, you walk <coughs> in the door, and says, honey, I got you flowers. Boom! <coughs> and throw at her. Did you get the flowers? Yeah. Did you give it to her? Yeah. You gave it to her, all right. Yeah. What's, what do you think your next move should be? Yeah. 911. Right? You call 911 before you run because you're not going to be able to outrun a knife or a shoe or any other object in the, in the wherever she is. And rightly so. So at least you want to have the call that you tell them that tell my family I love them very much. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> And then there's going to be a muffling sound of the. <laughs> 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 
Don't try it. Don't be brave. A lot of times when people are brave, it means they're stupid. Right? People get a little brave, get in big trouble. So, that's the idea of achna'a, busha, v'kavod. Those three things. Now, the love. Let's focus on the love. The love also has three qualities of how to perform the mitzvah. The first rule, simcha. Be happy. I see some people, I don't, thank God, I don't daven in this yeshiva in the morning. So I can't blame, I'm not blaming any of you. That's what I mean, thank God. I don't, no one here is going to get mad at me because I don't know how you're daven. But where I pray in the morning, I see guys are like this. Yeah, where's the happiness? Where's the happiness? Your Yitzhara is strong as in the morning. And it's so strong at night when you're in Ben Yehuda. <laughs> I think we don't know what you're doing. The Yetzirah is doing what it's supposed to do. It was designed by Kadosh Baruch Hu to do it. It's there to help you. You think it isn't. You think, Hashem, if you take it away from me, take the Yetzirah, I will be such a tzaddik. Hashem says that's your Yetzir talking. The Yetzir, you're supposed to use the Yetzir to worship Hashem. Want to go to school? Want to earn a degree? Be very clear why you're doing it. Hashem, I'm doing it so I can be connected to you. Keep it focused. So that when you go, you are, Hashem, I'm doing this because with this, I believe I can be connected to you. This should not be an obstacle to take me away from you. But if the attitude is, so I got to do ishtadlut, I have to work, I have to have, make money, so I have to do this. Really? No. Bezrat Hashem, you will succeed in school. Without him, you won't. Somebody told me that I can't come to yeshiva because, you know, school is so hard and, and so I, you know, I extend it but I need to be on vacation because my school is so hard. I said, wait, you're telling me that because of your school you can't learn Torah? Said, yeah, it's very hard for me. I said, okay. So you just asked the Kadosh Baruch Hu to get rid of your school. You should have seen his face. He was like, what? I, said, what? I heard you say to the Kadosh Baruch Hu, my school is so hard, I can't learn Torah. So fine, Hashem will remove the school, you'll get kicked out, and then you have time to learn. No, oh, that would be terrible. I said, okay, so now don't put that. <laughs> That's not what you're saying. You have to be very careful. You guys want to hear something? Unbelievable. True, this is a, there's a guy, he's walking around here. He's not here now. Not in this, he was never attended this class. But he told me this. He prayed to Hashem to help him. He had a problem with pistachio ice cream. And he got rid of all the pistachio ice cream in his house. Told the pistachio ice cream, get out of here. Take your friends. Forget it, it's over. Finito la historia. Okay? And he said, Hashem gave him the strength to stick with it. And then he said, but then Hashem created dry season for me. And I couldn't find anybody. For a whole year almost. I prayed to Hashem to send me a girl. I mean, pistachio ice cream. <laughs> so I said to him, listen to me. You pray to Hashem to help you so you can get out of this situation so that you can start growing in strength in your relationship to Hashem. Hashem helped you. He kept all the other girls away from you. And you were begging Him to bring them back. He helped you. You got what you wanted. And he just realized it. And I told him that. 
Hashem listens to us when we pray. He listens to us when, he pr- when we pray. And He gives us what we pray for. He does it in His way. And it takes us to think about it in order to see that we got what we actually prayed for. It's not going to come the same way that you, if you're praying, as I said, give me a million dollars, a million dollars, a million dollars. It's not like ding dong, here's your million dollars, thank you. Note from thank you, Hashem says, here you go, I got you, I hooked you up. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. But you might get it. But when you get it, you need to use it for what Hashem gave it to you. Hashem gave you a brain. He gave you eyes that work, ears that work, cognition, right? Your health. What do you think he wants you to use it for? Learn finance? Learn accounting? Use your faculties to recognize that God runs this world. If you can do it through accounting, Shem doesn't say you can't do that. But you have to understand why you have those faculties, why you have those tools. He didn't give them to you. Look, he created you not by mistake, correct? And he made you who you are not by mistake, correct? Because he believed that this world needs you. Correct? Okay. So the world needs you. We need you. Do what you're supposed to be doing. That doesn't mean don't go to school. It doesn't mean throw everything away. No, chas v'shalom. But recognize that what you're doing and try to see how it connects you to the Kaddish Baruch Hu. And if there are things that are more remote that don't connect you, then add other things. Add more mitzvot. Add times to learn Torah. School, I was, in, I was a professor. I know how much time people spend in school. You could still have a morning Seder. Right? You don't go to school six hours every day, five days a week in university. Most of the classes you don't even have to attend. We both know that. We all know that. There are some classes that even the professor doesn't need to attend. Right? Gives you, puts everything online. And go over there, you'll see. So? It's not either or. It's not either or. But the idea is that when you perform a mitzvah, you have to do it besimcha. It's a mitzvah to support your family. It's a mitzvah to earn a living. It is. You should do it b'simcha. Okay. The next is dvekut. And then the last one, kina. Kina means to be zealous in performing the mitzvot. We will talk about each one in a minute. So the purpose of yirah is not necessarily to fear the punishment. The Rambam in Chotshuvah tells us that that is the lowest level, that the reason you're performing the mitzvot is because you're afraid that God is going to slap you down. Really, the type of year that the Kaddosh Baruch Hu wants is that you see how great God is. How lofty Hashem is. The intricacies of this universe, of how mind-boggling it is, and how His infinite wisdom is in your own life of things that happen. That you should think in your mind that right now, what are you doing? What are you doing, Hunter? Okay. Before whom? Hashem. Don't take that lightly. Josh, this is it. This is as good as it gets. 
you are doing it, you're learning Torah as a mitzvah. Mitzvah of the Kadosh Baruch Hu, and he is paying attention to you. Know before whom you stand. God sees everything. He knows what you're thinking. So he says, the Tana says, You should know three things. Keep them in mind. One, that you are standing before the Boreit Barach Shemo. And that when you are praying and you are saying, Hashem, give me this, give me that, you are speaking to God. You are. You are speaking to him and he's listening to you. You're having a conversation with God. This is not simple. It's not simple, Matan. Lamod bifne the Kadosh Baruch Hu to stand before him and to speak to him. Problem is, people say, oh, I don't see it. You don't see a lot of things that you accept. There's a lot of things that you don't see that you feel. There are a lot of things that you don't see that you experience. Right? And so he says it's very hard that the eye doesn't see. And it's much harder to even conceptualize in his mind. But if you have the true seichel, if you think about it a little bit and pay attention, you will see that you're really standing before Kadosh Baruch Hu and you are begging him, mitchanen befanav, and you ask f- stuff from him. You're asking stuff from Kadosh Baruch Hu in your, when you're praying. You're not asking from somebody. From God, Josh. How do you have to have Respect for a mitzvah. Sorry. So he tells us that when you wear tzitzit, get a nice tzitzit. When you have a pair of tefillin, get a nice pair of tefillin. Have a beautiful sefer Torah. Get a nice lulav. Right? The idea is that when you come to perform a mitzvah, think about what you're doing, and if you have an object that you use to do the mitzvah, Spend some money on it. You go on a date. You're going to take her to a falafel joint? You're going to spend money. You're going to take her to a nice restaurant. You're going to buy a nice cup of uh, a glass of wine, maybe. Why not? You're not going to tell her, listen, uh, my budget is 20 shekels, so, uh, you know. You're going to spend some cash. Why? Because you respect her. Because you respect yourself. That's how you show respect to the mitzvah. You do it in a nice way. That's the idea. Kavod. So he says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to make sure that you do it for the right reasons. He doesn't need our honor. And it's not really important to him. But it's a sign that we show ourselves of how we care for the mitzvot. It's a sign for us. And we learn from Cain and Hevel very early. Right? Remember? Hevel and Cain each both brought sacrifices to Hashem. Hevel brought from the choicest fruit. And what did Cain bring? The lowest. Why? Because heaven said, I'm bringing you the best sheep, the best fruits of the flock. And Cain said, you're going to burn it anyway. So I'll just give him this rotten tomato. Here you go. And this, you know, crooked cucumber. And this apple with two holes in it. With a worm looking at it, coming out. Who cares? Does God need my fruit? No. Does he need anything from you? He doesn't. He doesn't. Can he make you submit to him? If he wanted to. Look what happened to Paro. 
But the idea is that we need it. And that's the idea. You bring the most, the choiciest, the best. So that we show that the mitzvot are not bzuyot. We, we, they're not disgusting to us. We perform them in the best way that we could. Okay, now. So in that sense, Shabbos. Comes Shabbat. You dress in your nicest clothes. Why? Because you're mechabed the Shabbos. Same thing with Yamim Tovim. And that's all the way. He gives lots and lots of examples. I don't want to get into it with all the details. But it's very important. And it says also, Whoever respects the Torah, Gufo mechubad ala briot. Other people have respect for his goof, for his body. But you have to be mechabed the Torah. Okay. So we see that a person who wants, which is the core of Hasidut, is that you want to please God. You want to please Him. You want to do things that make Hashem happy. What makes Hashem happy? Those are, now you're giving me the details. What's the big idea? What makes Hashem happy? And you perfect yourself. Right? By perfection, by perfecting yourself, you come closer to Hashem. And when you're close to Hashem, what happens? You experience pleasure. What does Hashem want for you? To experience pleasure. That's what He wants. People say, I, I want to be happy. I just want to have a good time. Somebody said to me the other day, he said, you know, I, I want to have a good time. Like you, you know, the way you live, you, you, you know, you don't really have a good time. I said, I have a better time than you. I'm much happier than you. My life is a lot happier than you. You go clubbing, and when, you don't go, when you come home by yourself, you're bummed. When I go to my club with a safer, I'm not coming home the same person that I left. I never go home alone. Said, I don't get satisfaction if some drunk girl gave me her number. You do. And I told him, you think I don't know what goes around the clubs? You walk in the club, you walk around the herd, trying to find the wounded gazelle, <laughs> right? The drunk one, you're trying to figure out. And her friends rally, you know, the other herd, they try to protect him, don't go with him, he's dangerous, stay with us. And you try to cut, and there's always the one that you want. She's got an ugly friend. And you got to convince one of your friends to take the ugly one. So you, I, you think I don't know. And then in the end, you get a stupid number. And then you call the next day. She's like, who are you? This is it. This is the highlight of your life. This is the highlight of your life. I don't get it. Why? I don't, I'm not missing anything. If you paid me, I wouldn't go. He said, listen to me, I'll pay you, just come, you know. Give us tips on what to say to the girl. I, I you know, he's like, ah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The Torah provides you a framework for the ultimate pleasure. Ultimate pleasure. Yes, your body pays cash. You're right. The body pays cash. Hungry, you eat, satisfied, you get a check, right? You get cash. Boom, 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 boom. The yetzer will pay for everything that it gets you to do. It will pay you in cash. You perform it, it'll pay you. But you'll be broke. You'll be broke at the end. Because once you get in the end, you realize you spent all your money. You get to Ulam Abba, and say to your new, what did you bring with you? Empty pockets. Nothing. 
Nothing. And you can't say, listen, uh, you know, uh, I couldn't. I had to get a job. I had to, you know, I had to learn accounting. It's giving out, using that. Engineering. I had to be an engineer, you know, I had to fabricate all sorts of tchotchkes. I tell you, okay, oh, you want to eat? Yeah, I'm starving. Did you bring anything with you? One time, you gave some food to a cat from the yeshiva. And he said, oh, by the way, that is a tuna salad. Remember, 20 years ago, you gave the cat, you did a chesed. That's your meal today. You had a little bowl of, of tuna. I'm like, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever had. You eat it. What about tomorrow? Well, we'll see. We'll see what you bring. And then one day you gave this kid, you bought him a falafel. So they say, oh, here's your falafel. Why is it like, you know, the oily? Uh, that's, what you, that's what you brought with you. That's the idea. The ultimate pleasure in life is connection to Hashem. You'll have a lot more pleasure. There are people who say, yeah, but I'm looking for fun. Fun and pleasure are two separate things. Pursuit of fun is different than pursuit of happiness. There are people who confuse the two. They think that happiness and fun is the same thing. That makes it very difficult as they grow up. Right? <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is because they're all these, you know, they do the bloopers of people my age trying to have fun, and it's not good. They fall, they flip, they this, they that, right? Because it does. at some point, you have to accept that it's not, don't pursue fun, pursue happiness. There's an age that you pursue fun, and there's time that you're supposed to grow up. And when you grow up, you pursue happiness. And we have a way to achieve ultimate happiness. Not everybody does. There are other groups, other religions, that will tell you we have our ultimate happiness. But we don't have the truth. Because you can't have, all the religions cannot be true. Only one of them is true. Only one. Because you take one religion, you take all the other religions, they all contradict one major teaching of that religion. It's a separate conversation for those of you at home. We can talk about this for a long time. But I'm going to stop now. Because of Mincha. We have the truth. And we have ultimate happiness. And ultimate pleasure. See you tomorrow. <laughs>